But but now we gave people weapons. Right? We weaponized social media. And now it's a platform. We have confused speaking the truth with speaking your truth. Yeah. And and people think it's the same. Well thing. said. But the reality well is um, we ha are having a lot of technological help being divided. Right. And so now when I see, especially on social media, Jake, if you believe something different than me, politically, religiously, socially, morally, my immediate response is to refute, convert, and to re reject, and then convert you. <laughs> it's, I know right? it's a cult. It's immediately, I have to change you to cult save life. you from yourself. Yeah. Um, there's me... no possibility that there's any flaws in my thinking. Yeah. Let me ask you, Ron, though. Jake had shared something with me uh, a couple of days ago. Do you think that a lot of people who are leaders should even be leaders? We're elevating people who have no skills, who have no quality to be a leader, who, I mean, you want equity and fairness. I, I totally get it. And there should be. But at the same point, when you have certain people elected office who are leading a really important branch of the government that can't get anything done and don't know how to lead and don't have the qualifications, that that's that's the problem that we're, we're facing right now. And corporations are getting in, into this before. Before it was all about shareholder equity and trying to create, you know, money for a company right if you're public if you're private ron and gino can hang out in their basement do whatever they want it's our company we want to lead our own companies but when you're forward facing and you're a public company you're trying to do ideology and not trying to maximize shareholder value and you do that a lot of ways first you focus on the customers and then you focus on the employees and the shareholders will be rewarded that's what you really should do if you want a company that's going to grow because if the company com if the customers are satisfied then the employees will be satisfied especially if you have a mission if the employees are satisfied you're going to maximize dollars and then you're going to really crank. I think right now, people who are leading, they don't know what the hell they're doing. You can't be a 36 or 37 year old leading a massive entity of the government and you have and you have none. You have none. I'm not going to name any names, but I mean, you guys can probably- You have no experience, you're saying, or you real nothing. world credibility you have, you're to hold your position. Qualified. There's no qualifications to do the job. It's like, come on, bro. Give me a break. It's, I mean, how are you going right. to lead? So first of all, let's separate the private sector from the government because there, there's are two different worlds here, right? So- you're not going to get the best talent in government, right? So you're already starting with a gene pool that's diluted. Mm -hmm. um, but secondly, um, you, er, even the non-political, the appointed agencies are politicized, right? And so Washington is now fractured like a, you know a, a leg bone in a bad car accident. It's mm -hmm. completely splintered. And so even if you had talent to do the job, you're not going to be the, the bureaucracy levels, uh, the restricted levels. I, I mean, I have, I've got a couple of really big government agency clients. Um, one of them is a, a an agency that we all rely on a lot of protection from, and they're and the people in that firm in that firm are some of the most brilliant, mission driven, caring people I've ever met in my life. Um, it's three letters and it starts with a C, uh, and they're amazing. But the context in which they have to lead, the politicization of their protection mm -hmm. and their intelligence and their work. Is is hijacked by idiots. Yeah. And so, you know, but but the people, I, I I'm telling you, my private sector CEO clients would would give a limb to have that level of passion. And people, by the way, who could, could be making 10 times more in the private sector are choosing service, right? But these people are are frighteningly brilliant at what they do, but not people the people who lead them. So it's a different animal in the private sector. Um, I, you know, the, listen, the data is all clear, right? I, I combed the planet. I left no stone unturned. The companies that are being purpose driven and stakeholder driven, and not just customers and suppliers uh, and employees, but communities in which they do business. The companies that are focused on all the stakeholders, not just the shareholders, are outperforming their their competitive peers by wild margins, but on the S and P index by five hundred percent, but in uh, market share, brand loyalty. Um, uh, earnings per share, um, profitability, every metric you would care about, the companies that are genuinely doing it right and looking at all stakeholders in a very equal way, creating equitable environments in which people can thrive, where employees can do their best work, they're leaving their competitors. In, it's not even a small gap, right? So what, what let's, let's talk to, about boards. If boards of directors are not going to be, and I don't mean activist investors, those are idiots. I mean, people who are there to govern the organization. And, and, and provide you know, thoughtful leadership over the enterprise, if they're not going to ask their CEO and their, and their executive teams, how come you haven't pursued this? All the data says that this is the way competitors are winning and differentiating themselves. Why aren't we doing it? Do you think you're above that? You know, mm -hmm. If the boards are not going to assert themselves appropriately 
and ask the hard questions. Um, then you know, see, uh, then and then all the CEOs who are quarterly addicted to you know, first of all, look, look at WD forty, look at uh, Best Buy, look at the companies that provide never provided quarterly guidance, and they told their investors, "I'm not going to provide you quarterly guidance." And they're knocking it out of the park because they're really keeping that long term. It's a long term mentality, but that's the same reason. Going to our point before was last year and the year before investing was a challenge if you had a short term mentality. If you needed to do the deal and you needed to place the money, you were exposed. And so you said everybody sat on the cash, right? And then was and then it started doing really stupid things with it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, making really blind and uninformed choices. And that cash is still out there, but now people are are, are clinging to it and hoarding it mm-hmm. when they actually, this is the time to invest it. That's that's exactly right. 